Hi there, and welcome back. Computer systems are sometimes called number crunches. When you press a key on a keyboard, you are actually sending a number called an ASCII value or an ASCII code to your processor, which will then translate the number into the character on your keyboard. ASCII is short for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. That means ASCII is an industry standard. In other words, electronic communications can take place between different hardware and software technologies in a consistent way. So your keyboard can talk to the operating system in a format that the operating system can also understand. And your screen, printer software, the internet and other technologies all understand the same standardized numbering system that represents characters. ASCII characters are organized in groups in the ASCII character set. The characters in the ASCII character set are numbered from 0 to 255. You learned before that the byte data type stores whole numbers in the range 0 to 255. That means that every character in the ASCII character set is one byte in storage, represented by a combination of 8 ones and zeros in binary. The ASCII table has three groups of characters. The groups are ASCII control characters, ASCII printable characters, and extended or special characters. Let's explore the control characters first. Control characters are numbered from 0 to 31. The ASCII code for delete is squeezed into this group, although it is out of sync, because delete is also a control character. The characters on your keyboard that do not display a character when you type them, like enter and backspace, are all control characters. You do not have to memorize all these ASCII codes. But I do want to point out a few that we use often to process characters. Your backspace key has an ASCII value of 8. And enter is ASCII 13. Your enter key is also known as the carriage return key. Because in the days of the old typewriters, if you get to the right margin of the paper you are typing on, you had to move a mechanism called a carriage back to the left margin of the paper to start typing from left to right again. So when you press an enter key to get back to the left margin in a text editor, you are returning the carriage or the cursor back to the left margin. The second group of characters are the printable characters in the ASCII table. Printable characters are those characters that we can see when we press a key on a keyboard. The ASCII codes of printable characters range from number 32 to 126. These include the numeric characters 0 to 9, your number keys has ASCII values that range from 48 to 57. Notice that these ASCII codes follow each other, from lowest to highest. In ASCII, uppercase and lowercase letters do not have the same ASCII codes. Uppercase A to Z have ASCII codes that range from 65 for uppercase A to 90 for uppercase Z. Lowercase A to Z have ASCII codes that range from 97 for lowercase A to 122 for lowercase z. Also notice the ASCII codes for characters like space, punctuation, quotation marks, opening and closing brackets and so on. I want you to make a note of ASCII code 34 for a double quotation mark. ASCII code 34 is very handy when we need to concatenate quotation marks to variables. The third group is extended characters. These are special characters that can be typed by pressing your ALT key and the ASCII value together. Let's look at ASCII code 168 as an example. If you press ALT plus the ASCII code 168, you will get a question mark that is upside down. Now that you know what ASCII is, let's summarize the importance of ASCII. ASCII gives computer systems a common way to talk to each other. ASCII provides a way for us to identify characters and numbers on a keyboard. These include letters A to Z in uppercase and lowercase, and also numbers 0 to 9, and extended characters, as well as those characters that are not displayed like enter, backspace, tab, escape and so on. Let's look at ASCII in a Delphi project. Here I have a form with a rich edit and a blue panel. The panel contains two labels. When you type the text in the rich edit, LBL character shows the character as you press the key on your keyboard and LBL ASCII value displays the ASCII code of the key you pressed. And here at the bottom of the form, I added the status bar with one status bar panel to show the user which key was pressed. The character must display between double quotation marks. To detect every key pressed by the user, we will write code for the on-key press event of the rich edit. 
You can create the user interface yourself or you can go over to patreon.com slash landelphi to download the starter files. Then you can come back to do the rest of the project with me. Here's the user interface in design time. Select the reach edit on the form. Click the events tab in the object inspector. Notice the different events that can be triggered for the reach edit, like on change and on click. Scroll down a bit. Here we see a group of keyboard events. We want to detect which key was pressed by the user, so we will use the on key press event. Double click the cell next to on key press. A new procedure is created to handle the on key press event of the reach edit. Let's start by declaring local variables. Go above the begin statement, type var, and on the next line, chr key pressed as char. And on the following line, BTE ASCII code as byte. CHR key pressed is a char variable that will store the character that the user pressed on the keyboard. And the byte called BTE ASCII code must store the ASCII value. Go between begin and end. Type three comments to separate input, processing and output. Go under input and type CHR key pressed colon equals key. But wait, we didn't declare a variable named key, so where does that come from? The on key press event is more specialized than some of the events that we explored in the past. The event handler receives the details of the object that sends the event in an event argument called sender, which is of type T object. All event handlers has an argument called sender. We explored the purpose of sender a few lessons ago. However, the event handler for on key press also has an additional parameter called key that is of type char. This parameter receives the character of the key that was pressed on the keyboard. For example, if you press an A on your keyboard, the value of the key parameter will be A. On this line, we read the value that we pass to the procedure and assign it to the variable called chr key pressed that we declared above begin. Go to the line under processing, type BTE ASCII code, colon equals key. BTE ASCII code is a byte variable, in other words a number, but the key is a character or a char. To get the ASCII code, which is a byte, we need to retrieve the ordinal of the character passed in the parameter called key. Put your cursor in front of the name of the parameter called key and type ORT, followed by an opening bracket, and type a close bracket before the line terminator. Now let's explore ordinals and the ORT function. You will often hear programmers talk about ordinal types. So what is an ordinal type? Ordinal types are data types that follow each other in an ordered sequence. And ordinal types can be looped in code. In other words, we can use loops to execute through the ordinal types in a specific order and sequence. Ordinal types can also be counted. All the integer types are ordinal types. That include byte, small int, and integer. A byte data type, for example, range from 0 to 255, and it can be counted in a specific order. The char data type is therefore also an ordinal type, because the ASCII codes of characters range from 0 to 255. So, we will be able to also loop through characters, just like we can loop through numbers. To identify the ASCII code of a character, we use the ORT function. The ORT function takes a char as input and it returns an integer type. In this case, it is a byte called BTE ASCII value, which stores the ASCII code that belongs to the char that we passed in. Let's assume the character you passed in is the uppercase letter A. The ORT function will go and retrieve the ASCII value, which is an ordinal for uppercase A and it gets 65. Then the ORT function will assign its result, which is the number 65, to an integer data type. So this code will now retrieve the ASCII number of the key and save it in the byte called BTE ASCII code. Now go under output, type LBL character dot caption colon equals CHR key pressed. Here we take the character we saved in CHR key pressed and we assign it to the caption of LBL character. Go to the next line and type the following code. To concatenate the byte to a string, we must first convert the byte to a string with the intoString function. 
Go to the next line, type the following code. Notice how I include double quotes in my strings to display the character in the variable between quotation marks. This code will display the key the user pressed in a status bar panel of a status bar component. A status bar is used in many applications to display status information in a collection of panels contained by the status bar component. Here we see that Delphi is also using a status bar with a few panels at the bottom of the code editor. And here is an example of a status bar for a document created in Microsoft Word. The panels of a status bar are numbered with an index. Index number 0 is the first status bar panel in the panels collection. I only added one panel on the status bar, so its index is 0. Let's read the code from the back. It reads, take the sentence, you press the A or B or whatever key and assign it to panel 0 in the panels collection of the status bar named SPR key info. Ok, now run the project, type an uppercase A into the rich edit. The ASCII code for uppercase A is 65. Type lowercase a. The ASCII code is 97. Also notice the message in the status bar. It shows the character between double quotes. You can also try it with other keys. Now, earlier I asked you to make a note of the ASCII code for a double quotation mark. It was number 34. Remember that number. Close the form. Here, where we type the double quotation marks we want to display, we can use the ASCII codes instead of the literal characters. Remove the double quotation marks on both sides. After the first plus sign, type hash 34, followed by another plus. Now we concatenate the character represented by ASCII code 34 before the variable. Remember, ASCII code 34 is the double quotation mark. Let's do the same on the other side of the variable. After this plus, Type hash 34 again, followed by another plus. Run the project. Type any character. This message still displays the character that was pressed between double quotation marks. Because we concatenate the character represented by ASCII code 34, which is a quotation mark on both sides of the variable. Close the form and save your work. Next time we will learn how to do the opposite. We will retrieve the character by providing the ASCII code. If this lesson was helpful to you, please like and subscribe and share the lessons with all your friends on social media. Also, don't forget to download all my lessons from patreon.com slash learndelphi. And a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon. I'll talk to you again in the next lesson.